In this question, we need to calculate the moving average and these kind of questions can be solved easily using window functions. But since we learned in the 35th video of this series that we can also get the desired result using self joins and sub queries as well. So let's try to solve this question using self join and sub queries. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. On this channel, we try to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. This video is in continuation of the SQL 50 Crack SQL Intro in 50 Question series where we are trying to learn hands on SQL using 50 carefully created questions covering diverse aspects of SQL. So, we are already done with the select part, basic joins, basic aggregate functions. Then, we are also done with sorting and grouping as well as advanced select and joins. We are currently working on the subqueries part and then we will be ending with advanced string functions, rejection clauses. In this video, we are going to solve this question called restaurant growth and try to learn from it. So yeah, let's jump right in. So this is the 40th video of this series called restaurant growth. And if you look at the companies, this question has been asked in 0.72. Let's look at what the question has to say. We are given a table called customer with four different columns, customer ID, name, visited on and amount. In SQL, the combined columns, customer ID and visited on is the primary key for this table. This table contains data about customer transactions in a restaurant. Visited on is the date on which the customer with ID, customer ID has visited the restaurant. Amount is the total paid by a customer. You are the restaurant owner and you want to analyze a possible expansion. There will be at least one customer every day. Compute the moving average of how much the customer paid in a seven days window that is current day plus six days before. Average amount should be rounded to two decimal places and the result table should be ordered by visited on in ascending order. Okay, so here we need to calculate moving average. Let's look at the example and see what do we need in our output. So here we have various customers they visited on date and the amount they paid. Okay, so this table starts at 1st of January 2019 and 7 day period is 1st of January 2019 till 7th of January 2019. So uh, every day one particular customer is visiting. So the total amount paid in the 7 day period is 100 plus 110 plus 120 and all the all the way up to 150 which will come out to be 860. Similarly, the next 7 day period is between 2nd of January 2019 till 8th of January 2019. And if you sum this part up, then you will have something else and so on. So that is what you have in our output. So 7 day period until 7th of January 2019 this was the amount this was the average amount and similarly for 8 9 and 10 okay so in this question we need to calculate the moving average and these kind of questions can be solved easily using window functions but since we learned in the 35th video of this series that we can also get the desired result using self joins and sub queries as well so let's try to solve this question using self join and sub queries okay so first thing that we should do is since on a particular day multiple customers can visit for example if you look at this on 10th of january 2019 there were two different customers who paid different amount so first step should be let's group by the visited on and have a particular amount the total sum paid by different customers on a particular visit date because the logic that we are going to develop this step is important so that it will reduce redundancy okay so what i'm saying is from this table called customer let's group by right so let's group by the visited on visited on column and then let's return visited on visited on and then do a sum of the amount column and let's alias this as amount and uh, let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output okay let me just drag it to the left so that it's easier for us okay drag it above okay so on every particular day now we have one row which shows okay this was the total amount paid by all the customers on a particular date okay then let's store this into something called a common table expression which we also learned about in this series earlier basically what we are doing is we are storing this in a table called whatever we want to so for example the way to do this is we need to write with common table expression name you can write any name let me write c s tmr customer as and this entire thing go should go into parentheses let me drag it down okay so what this is is let me do select star from customer so we are just storing this result the result that we still right now have into something called customer okay let me go ahead and run this let's you know double cross it okay so okay we have the same thing now let's switch to excel and try to develop a logic 
so here this was the customer table and using this customer table we created a common table expression called CSTMR which is basically this so this is what we have now what we need to do is we learned in the 35th video that if we perform a self join that is join this table on itself using the logic if you want to calculate running total or moving averages you should join two versions of this table on the logic that version one dot visited on is greater than equal to version two of visited on so what i'm saying is let me just you know copy this again so that it's easier for me to you know show this okay so let's say this is c1 version and this is c2 version and then let me go ahead and write the code so what i am doing is from the first version right as c1 let me left join the same table but this time version number two c2 on c1 dot visited on is greater than equal to c2 dot visited on okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we have in our output let me just you know drag it above so that it's easier for us okay so what we basically did was okay so this one should be greater than equal to this one that is what we performed why did we do that because if you just look at this particular table and if someone will ask me what is the running total at a particular date so if i group by this column and sum this part right so for example on 1st of january 2019 the total would be 100 on 2nd of january 2019 the total would be these two rows sum right so 100 plus 110 on 3rd it will be 1 2 plus 3 right and so on so you see why we are using that logic but in this question we need to have a seven day window period what we want is starting from 7th of january so what we need to do is in this table we need to exclude certain rows that is we need to filter first condition should be that the difference between this column and this column should be between 0 and 6 why because the period should be not more than seven because for example if you do this do this logic right for this logic right so c1 dot visited on is greater than equal to c2 dot visited on so if i come here here for example if we look at this one right 8th of january 2019 8th of January 2019 is greater than or equal to 1st of January 2019. So there will be a row in the output which will have visited on from C1 date as 8th of January and this is going to be 1st of January. But what is the difference between these two? 8 days. If you include these two dates, so they are going to be 8 days we don't need that we only need the seven day part right so the first condition should be the difference should be between zero and six so first condition is where date difference so date difference between c1 dot visited on and c2 dot visited on is between right so between zero and six okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get okay so now if we look at our output here if you see right so now the 8th january does not have any row which has first of january 2019 it starts from two because why the difference between these two is six so that is the maximum that you can go similarly for nine it will start with third of january okay that is one thing then we also need to see that okay there are some of these for example these ones right first of january 2019 and all these we do not need because we do not need that in our output if you look at our output we only have starting from the seventh day right so how can we exclude those so we can use a sub query in this case how just think of it if we add another condition that the c1 dot visited date should be greater than or equal to the minimum date that we have in this table so the minimum date that we have in this table which is 1st of january 2019 and if you add the seven day period into it that will come out to be 7th of january 2019 so in our output what do we need 7th 8th 9th and 10th so another condition could be that okay if your visited on is greater than equal to the minimum date from the customer table plus seven days 
ओके सो हाउ कैन वी डू दैट लेट्स ट्राई टू इनकलकेट दैट फिल्टर एज वेल सो एंड द सेकेंड कंडीशन शुड बी सी वन डॉट विजिटेड सी वन डॉट विजिटेड ऑन इज ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू रिटर्न द मिनिमम फ्रॉम राइट सो द मिनिमम ऑफ विजिटेड ऑन डे फ्रॉम द कस्टमर टेबल फ्रॉम द कस्टमर टेबल बट नॉट द मिनिमम ऑफ विजिटेड मिनिमम प्लस सेवन सो हाउ कैन वी एड डेट्स वी लर्न अबाउट अ फंक्शन कॉल डेट एड सो डेट एड एंड देन लेट मी यू नो लेट मी जस्ट राइट okay so date add and in this particular how do we add days we need to write comma interval and then interval 6 days because the minimum is 1st of january if you add 6 then you will land up at 7th of january so interval 6 day okay now let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so now if i drag it above then let's if you see okay so now here we are only left with whatever is required for us so for example for 7th of january we need to have 7th 1 7 2 7 3 7 4 7 5 7 6 7 7 7 so here if you look at it you will only have until 7 7 okay so now for every date that is required in our output we have the values that were contributed or paid by various customers okay now we can go ahead and group by the visited on column and sum the amount because that is going to give you in our output the total amount right so here you need the amount and you also need the average amount so what we can do is so from this code from this particular code we are able to get this and then if i go ahead and do group by c1 dot visited on and then for every visited on date so c1 dot visited on and then you sum the amount column and alias this as amount because you need that as amount in our output as well so amount column and then we need to calculate the average rounded to two decimal places if you look at rounded to two decimal places and alias this as average amount so we need the average of amount column but this should be rounded to two decimal places and then alias as average amount and also at the end we need to sort this by visited on in ascending order so here we need to write order by c1 dot visited on in ascending order okay so i think this looks good let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output okay so you see the importance of writing these c1s and c2s it says column amount in field is ambiguous why because amount is coming from the customer right so if we go at customer so amount is coming from this as well as this so we need to sum the c2 dot amount part right so here we need to write c2 dot amount and same here as well so c2 dot amount let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get so now if i drag it above we can see that okay this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases yeah, this is accepted and this is how we do it so yes medium difficulty if you know about window functions you can actually use windows to solve this question much easier but since we have not learned about window function i also told you about a alternate way where you can use a self join and a sub query so in this question here we have the self join and this is a sub query which we use to calculate the moving moving average of the 7 day period so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video